So maybe you're not too familiar with Replit, and this video is gonna be all about an introduction to Replit. There's a wonderful guide on the Replit website about getting yourself set up. I'm just gonna go through some aspects of that just so you're ready to get up and running with Replit and Python. This tutorial, this text-based tutorial, is also available as a video. So I'll link to that in the top right-hand corner if you wanna go check out Replit's version. Hey crew, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, and I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journeys. Welcome back to our From Scratch to Python series. And in this video, we're gonna get started with the Python component. For the Python component, we're going to be using a website called Replit. And Replit is really cool. It's basically an integrated development environment, just an IDE, but it's all done online. So it takes care of all the installations and absolutely everything. All you need to do is sign up to it. And we're going to be coding in that. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is head to the Replit website. You just go to replit.com. Just search Replit in Google if you want to do that. And once you get to the homepage like I am here, of course, you're going to need to sign up to it. Here, choose your preferred way to sign up. You can either create a custom username, use a, an email here, or if you want to do a single sign-on, you could continue with Facebook, GitHub, or Google. I'm going to continue with GitHub, which is just an online repository where you can save your work. So then you'll need to type in your GitHub username and your password for it as well. And you can sign in. You do the same thing for Google or Facebook or if you wanted to use the custom sign up. So I've just used my GitHub to log into Replit. These two are linked now. You may have seen a screen in between that asks you to authorize it. But now we're all logged into Replit. And you'll see that I've got Teams for Education. You might have something different. I've just uh, signed up for an education account here. Cool, so this is gonna be a Python-centric tutorial. What you can do from this screen is we wanna create what's called a new REPL. And a REPL is just like a project in Scratch. Uh, so we're gonna create a REPL here. And this is just gonna be an area where we can code. Cool, so we're asked for languages here and we've got a whole heap of languages and the one that we're interested in is Python. So we're going to click Python and then we're going to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this one a spelling game because we're gonna replicate that scratch spelling game that we have done. If you're not too familiar with what that is, go check out the card in the top right hand corner and that will show you a scratch game that we've already coded. By default, all REPLs are public, which means anyone on the internet can view it. You can only make your REPLs private if you upgrade your account for private REPLs. So that will be a small fee for private repositories. Anyway, we're gonna keep this public and we're going to create the REPL. Okay, so we have landed on this screen right here and let's go through what each of these panes do. So this middle pane here is the code editor and you'll spend most of your time in this pane. It's a text editor where you can write your code. So we could add some Python code here and usually the first program that everyone writes is a hello world program. So if you type what I'm typing on here, print, and we type the text here, hello world, and I usually like adding an exclamation mark, this will print this text value or what's called uh, input here to an output screen. Now explore what this right hand side will be and this right pane editor is the output sandbox. And this is where you'll see whatever the code we've written here in action. All the output that your program produces will appear in this pane and it also acts as a quick sandbox to run small pieces of code which we'll look at later. So if I go up here and I press the run button, you can see the shortcut there is for command return or control return if you're on a Windows. I'm gonna press run and you'll see here on the right pane window we've output hello world. So we've printed the text hello world to the screen. If you haven't tried that already, go ahead and do it because this will be your very first program. Now there's a couple of other cool things about this right pane here. If you clear it, you can clear it by pressing the cross symbol. Now we can create a string value, like a text value in Scratch, and we can just type directly in here go hello world and I can click enter and you can see that we've just printed that text straight away. We can also do some pretty basic math calculations here. So two plus two, that's going to result to four. And we can also do some variable assignment, which is stuff like, okay, four, let's give the word four and we'll assign the value two plus two to it. Okay, so then when I type four, we get the number four. So we've just created a variable here, but I'm getting slightly ahead of myself and we will be attacking variables in future videos. I just wanted to show you that you can interact directly with this right hand pane as well. Let's jump over to the left hand side of the screen and you'll see we've got a pane here 
this uh, left pane, which is all for your files and configuration. And we will be creating another file in here for this series, but for the most part, we're just gonna be working with main.py. Usually these three little dots give you some options with that file. You can rename it, you can open it in different tabs, and we can also download it, but we're not gonna be doing any of those things right now. To add new files, you can just click the add file button, and you can also organize them into folders, and you can download the whole project as well. So Python files always have the .py or the .py file extension. So that will signify that we are working in a Python file. Now let's talk about the options here on the toolbar. And we don't really need to worry about too many of them. The one that maybe you wanna check out, you could watch some YouTube tutorials here. And the other one you probably wanna suss out at the moment is the settings. Clicking on the little paper here will get us back to that files, but let's go check out the settings. Now you can change the layout of the two panes here. At the moment, they're stacked side by side, but you can also have them stacked on top of each other. And this is the view I'm gonna leave it as because we're also gonna get the scratch window up onto the screen. So it's just gonna make it a little bit easier. You can resize these panes by grabbing the divider in the center of the screen and just dragging it up and down. You can also go for a dark theme. So I'm gonna work in a dark theme from here on in. You can also change the font size so we can make it a little bit more readable and we can change the indent size. So what does that mean? Well, well, indentation is quite important in Python and what indentation level does is group a set of instructions so that they're on the same line. So if I press the tab key on the keyboard, you'll see that I've just indented on the screen one, two spots. And if I change the indent size to four and I press tab again, now I've made that level one, two, three, four spaces long. So any code that exists on this level of indentation will all relate to the same group of instructions. Now this doesn't make so much sense right now, but when we start to introduce some custom blocks and we call them functions in Python, that's how we're gonna be grouping our sets of instructions. So indentation level is pretty important. Okay, there's a couple of other features I just wanna quickly talk about and then we'll wrap up this tutorial. The first is being able to share your replit. And in a minute or so, I'm gonna put some comments in this file that you can use to copy and paste. And it's really easy to copy a file in replit. All you need to do is go to the link and just highlight it up until the name of the project. You see I've got main.py there. If I open up an incognito window here and I go to that link, it's going to take us to the replit right here. And just like you can remix projects in Scratch, well, you can fork them in replit. Of course, I'll need to be logged in to be able to do that, but what that will do is create a copy of that project. So that's what you're gonna be doing with this custom project that I create. And here I'll be posting links in the descriptions and you can go off and fork that link into your own account. The last feature I wanna talk about is being able to work on the same project. So if you click invite up here in the top right hand corner and you enter in the username or the email address, of a friend or someone else you'd like to work on, then you can both work on this file online simultaneously, which is pretty neat. It's kind of called multiplayer mode. Makes it a little bit easier to do than what it is in Scratch. So that's just a handy little feature there as well. And you can certainly go down the rabbit hole of this, but you know you can do some interactions on this. So you can make some comments to each other and you can start some threads on particular lines of codes if you wanna have a discussion online about it. Okay, so we're just about to wrap up this tutorial. The last thing I wanna talk about is code comments. Now a code comment is a piece of code that does not run. Uh, what does that mean? Let me just get rid of the print statement here and I will clear our output here. And if we run this program, we know that it prints hello world. Now, if I don't want this particular line to run, I can put a hash symbol there. And you can see the color of that line change to green. Now, if I click run now, nothing happens in the console window here. And that means I've just told the editor and the compiler to go, hey, when you see this line of code, don't execute it. So I'm going to be putting a whole heap of comments in here that is going to reference our Scratch project and give us little clues about what we need to do for our Python version. So now on the screen, you can see that I've just put in a whole bunch of comments here inside of our file. And this is kind of like me planning this out. So it gives me some direction 
with what I want to be doing. You might be wondering, how did I come up with these comments? Well, let's jump over to Scratch to help us answer that question. Okay, so I'm over here in our Scratch project, our Scratch spelling game, and I'm just going to zoom in now because you can see all of our project here and all of our custom blocks, set column position in line, slice, all of the names of our custom blocks. Remember those. We've also got some here in dot as well. Names of these custom blocks are going to be the comments that we've created in our Python file. So you can see I've got set column position for line over in Python. I've also got the set column position for line. So this is just a reminder to say, okay, I need to implement this piece of code and I need to do it in the Python version. And I know if I go through and I complete all of these things that we're pretty much going to have the same program, but a Python version of it. And that's what we're going to be doing in our series. We're going to be going through custom block through custom block, learning about different aspects of Python so that we can get a taster. Now, just a disclaimer, this is not a thorough tutorial. I'm not going to give you the ins and outs of everything in Python. And that is just way outside of the scope for this. The goal of this is just to give you a little taster to dip your toe into the water and to set you up so that you can go on and explore and continue to learn in Python if it interests you. We just want to take something that you already know, which is how to code in Scratch and kickstart you in Python. So if you're up for the challenge, I'm ready to journey through this with you and let's get stuck into it in the next tutorial.